The Lord be with you. Let's consider the announcements as they're found in the folder that has the picture on the front. First of all, we look to the, those who are listed in the prayer of the church. Are there others we need to be praying for today? Please let us know if we can include um, those whom you know in our prayers. We'd, we'd be very happy to do that. I think the uh, announcements that I want to uh, especially emphasize are what's upcoming in the holiday season, the Holy Days season. Um, this morning already, after the uh, Sunday school hour, actually it's uh, during the Sunday school hour, it looks like a little bit, uh, the Christ anyway, Children's Christmas Eve program will take place from 11 to 12.15. Uh, the children should meet downstairs in the Sunday school opening room uh, where they can uh, gather and begin that practice. Um, also, the uh, Christmas decorating, there's a long announcement on the back of the service folder related to that. There's some helping hands that are needed in that regard, and that will start, it looks like, Friday, November 27th. Uh, Thanksgiving is also coming up. Uh, not next week, but the week after. And as the typical arrangement is that a Wednesday evening service will be provided, and I believe that's at St. John's this year. Um, and then Thursday, Thanksgiving Day service is here at 9 o'clock. And that'll be a, uh, one of our prayer, a matin service, a prayer service. I think that's it. Those are all the announcements that I'd like to make. Uh, well, one other. Um, I was asked to announce that the uh, funeral service for Ruth Bokelman, who uh, some of you I assume would know, Ruth Bokelman will be uh, 10.30 this coming Friday at Our Savior in Sedalia. So a service for Ruth Bokelman will be 10.30 at 10.30 this coming Friday at Our Savior in Sedalia. Are there any other announcements we need to make? Do you have any announcements? Okay, I think that's it. Uh, we are at the 24th Sunday after Trinity, the next to last Sunday of the church year. And we're going to begin this morning by singing hymn 846, Your Hand, O Lord, in Days of Old.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. In his hand are the depths of the earth, the heights of the mountains are his also. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. God on high, and on earth he's good.
glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Testament reading that's appointed for this 24th Sunday Sunday after Trinity is taken from Isaiah the 51st chapter. Awake, awake, put on strength, O arm of the Lord. Awake, as in days of old, the generations of long ago. Was it not you who cut Rahab in pieces that pierced the dragon? Was it not you who dried up the sea, the waters of the great deep, who made the depths of the sea a way for the redeemed to pass over? And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. I, I am he who comforts you. Who are you that you are afraid of man who dies, of the son of man who is made like grass, and have stretched and have forgotten the Lord your maker, who stretched out the heavens and laid the foundations of the earth? And you fear continually all the day because of the wrath of the oppressor when he sets himself to destroy? And where is the wrath of the oppressor? He who is bowed down shall speedily be released. He shall not die and go down to the pit, neither shall his bread be lacking. I am the Lord, your God, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. And I have put my words in your mouth and covered you in the shadow of my hand, establishing the heavens and laying the foundations of the earth and saying to Zion, you are my people. This is the word of the Lord.
The epistle reading is from Colossians, the first chapter. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, May you be strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus was saying these things to them, behold, a ruler came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples. And behold, a woman who had suffered from a discharge of blood for twelve years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his garment, for she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I will be made well. Jesus turned, and seeing her, he said, Take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. And when Jesus came to the ruler's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, Go away, for the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And the report of this went throughout all the district. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Jesus' name, amen. And they laughed at him. They laughed at Jesus. I watched the news yesterday, and I watched it again this morning, and as people gather around the memorials that are being set up in France, you don't see a lot of laughing, do you? And as I look at the people that are gathered there around those flowers that are being placed after the horror that happened on Friday, I wonder how many of them even know who Jesus is. There is, in general, a great forsaking of the Savior and of his word and of the peace and the hope and the life that he can give. This is an opportunity, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is an opportunity for us to speak, to make known that there is a God of love. We just, that was the last thing we sang in this hymn, that we have a God of love, not a God who desires to destroy others, but rather one who would give life. This is an opportunity, and so we must be strengthened. We must be strengthened to speak and to live, to be strengthened in such a way that even if horror would come into our own lives, terror, suffering, and pain, and death, that we confess Christ and his salvation and the life that he gives to the very end. It's important that we hear these words today. Our Lord has given to us these words on this 24th Sunday after Trinity, the next to last Sunday of the church year. In these last Sundays of the church year, we especially uh, bring to our own minds the end. That Christ will come again, as we confessed in the creed, that Christ will come again to judge the living and the dead. And that before he returns, there will be great turmoil in the world. We see that turmoil. We know that Christ will return. When? We don't know. So we must be prepared in faith. I pray that it is for the sake of faith that you have come here this morning. And if it is for that reason, then you shall be blessed in the hearing of God's word, in the receiving of his grace for you, his forgiveness and love for you, because of our Savior Jesus. If you have not come for that reason, if you've come for any other reason than for the sake of faith, if you've come because others will be here and they'll know you're not, your family is here and they've insisted that you come, then repent and open your ears to Jesus. Open your ears to his word for you. The ruler had heard about Jesus, no doubt. The other gospel writers give us a little more description of this gospel text that we have before us today. The ruler is identified by name in the other gospel accounts, in Mark and Luke, that is, and he's called Jairus. And he was at that point of confronting his own faith because, you see, his daughter had died. Death had come into his world just as death has come into the world of so many throughout the world, but especially, and in particular, those who are suffering so deeply overseas. This ruler knew the sting, the pain, the hurt of death because his dear daughter had breathed her last. But he had heard about Jesus. He had heard that Jesus was preaching the kingdom of heaven was at hand and that it was his hand that was bestowing that kingdom. He knew that Jesus had done miraculous things. He had cast out demons. He had healed the sick, raised the dead. And that that could be true for his daughter, too. So he comes to Jesus in faith. He had heard about Jesus, and he believed in Jesus. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, This must be our life, not the last resort, not I hope maybe God can do something about this, but that we seek our Lord at every opportunity, that as we have learned from the Catechism, for instance, in the explanation to the Second Commandment, that we call upon God in every trouble, that we pray, praise, and give thanks 
at every opportunity that we receive from our God his word which builds faith in our minds and in our hearts so that we can speak and live that faith for the sake of the world that seemingly is falling apart as every day passes. In these gray and latter days, more than ever, we need to not only believe in Christ with all of our heart and soul and mind and call upon him constantly, but to speak of him at every opportunity so that there is hope in the hearts of even those who would gather around a memorial of flowers, that they would know that death does not have the final word with Jesus because he has conquered death in the forgiveness of sins given to sinners and by his resurrection from the dead. This ruler had heard of Jesus, and so he comes. And he brings his prayer. We sang in that hymn just now about prayer. Hear us, Father, when we pray. Through your Son and in your Spirit, by your Spirit's word convey all that we through Christ inherit, that as baptized heirs we may truly pray comes into the face of his Jesus and he prays, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus rose and followed him with his disciples, with a great crowd of people. And as they're going down the road to Jairus' house, to the ruler's house, he's confronted by another woman who comes in faith. This woman has had a hemorrhage of blood for 12 years, but she's heard. She's heard about Jesus. She's heard that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. She has heard that Jesus can work miracles. And she is convinced in her own mind that even if she just touches the hem of his garment, that she will be blessed. And so she does. She reaches out with her own hand and she touches the fringe of Jesus' garment. The other gospel writers uh, bring more detail to this. Jesus knows when someone is touching his garment, even in the midst of this crowd, these disciples, as they're walking down to Jairus' house, and he recognizes that someone has touched him, and indeed that something miraculous has happened because of Jesus. And he says, who has touched me? And his disciples say, how can we know who has touched you in the midst of this great crowd? Jesus turns, as Matthew writes, Jesus turns and he sees this woman. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, don't you know that Jesus is always turning on you to look at you, to see into your mind and in your heart, to see your faith. Jesus turns on this woman and he sees her. And he speaks words that strengthen her faith. Take heart, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And instantly, the woman was made well. You see, that's what Jesus' word does. Jesus' word makes us well. Now be careful here. We know it's true. That not always do we receive healing for our bodies but we certainly receive healing and strength for our souls and in our faith, knowing that as Jesus promises us, he works all things together for our good, and the all things culminate, finally, in eternity, where there is no more sin and no more dying, no more <coughs> suffering and disease, but only life. And that ultimately is the goal of every child of God, every one baptized in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, is to receive the ultimate healing of eternity. You must know that this woman, even though she was healed, as Jesus gives his word into her ears, this woman who was healed of her affliction in time died, as do all. But her faith brought her to Jesus. And Jesus strengthened her in her faith and even provide a measure of relief from her affliction. Now don't you know that Jairus, when he saw this, was heartened even more. What I have heard about Jesus is true. 
He does work miracles. They must have picked up their step a bit to get to the home. And when they get to the home, the morning has begun. The tears are flowing because that's what death brings. The flute players are playing their morning song. The crowd is making a commotion with their wailing, with their tears. And Jesus speaks. He speaks words of faith for those who have ears to hear. He says, go away, for this girl is not dead but sleeping. Make no mistake here, she's not just sleeping as we sleep night in and night out. She's died. But Jesus is describing sleep for those who have faith, or death for those who have faith as sleep, as a rest. Nothing to be feared because of Jesus, but rather we rest in the hands of our God who has rescued us from eternal death and given to us eternal life. Our souls rest for a time in the hands of our God and our bodies rest in the ground until he will come again to judge the living and the dead. We'll hear about that in particular next Sunday on the last Sunday of the church year. Jesus is returning and so we must have faith. We must receive this Jesus in great praise the salvation that he has wrought in our lives and the faith that he has put into our hearts. Jesus speaks words, and yet there are still those who don't want those words. They laughed at him. But Jesus was speaking the truth, wasn't he? This girl who had died was resting in her God. So Jesus does what only Jesus can do. He reaches out her ha his hand and he takes her by the hand and raises her to new life. And the report spread throughout all the district. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, you have come here today in faith. To be strengthened in your faith. You have already reached out your hands to your Savior. You have opened your ears to his words. You know that he is, for you, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of life everlasting. The resurrection to life everlasting. That is your hope in the fears that we face day in and day out as we hear about the world that is seemingly crumbling around us. We know that we have a God who loves us and a Savior who has provided for us. Believe it and live in it, and confess it. Go out the doors today confessing this God, a God of love and mercy, a God of eternity, and that for all the world, so that others too might be strengthened in their faith in Jesus. You will come in just a few moments and reach out your hand, and receive into your hand and finally into your very body, Jesus himself body and his blood given and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins to be strengthened in your faith. Receive that in great thanksgiving and praise. And when you go forth, call upon him in every trouble and pray and praise and give thanks and confess this Jesus who has strengthened you now in faith so that you might live with him forevermore. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ, your Savior. Amen. Please rise.
Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, by your word and promise, you have made us your people. By Christ's death and resurrection, you have forgiven all sin and brought us to yourself. By your spirit, continually to give us faith that clings to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may rejoice in the reconciliation he has wrought and be reconciled also to our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by your word and promise, you have made us your people. (laughs) Teach us to resist temptation and to walk in the good works that you have prepared for us beforehand. Give us faith that we may always believe your holy and saving word and lead godly lives here in time and there in eternity. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by your word and promise, you have made us your people. Give to your church faithful pastors who preach the whole counsel of your saving word. We pray that you would bless Matthew, our synod's president, Lee, our district president, Eric, our circuit visitor, and all who serve in the office of the holy ministry, that they may proclaim the saving gospel with boldness and joy. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by your word and promise, you have made us your people. Protect the weak among us. Grant health to those who are sick or injured. Visit and relieve the lonely. And teach us to cast all of our cares on our Lord. This morning we continue to pray for Elsie Pearl and Katie Beth, Paul, Francis, Donna May, Cecil, Les, Vernon, Lucille, Harry, Kathy, Bob, Nadine, Iona, Emmalou, David, Kyle, Ella Ray, Dick, Robert, Zoe, David, Pastors Mueller and Joseph, and any others whom we might know. Have mercy upon them, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, by your word and promise, you have made us your people. We know that your thoughts are not our thoughts, and your ways are not our ways. In your wisdom, you have permitted this disastrous terror attack terrorist attack to to come upon those who live in France and in other places throughout the world. We implore you, O Lord, let not the hearts of your people despair, nor our faith fail us, but sustain and comfort us. Direct all efforts to attend to those who are injured, console those who are bereaved, and protect those who are helpless. Bring hope and healing even through the words of your own people, that all of us might find our relief and restoration in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by your word and promise, you have made us your people. Give us each day our daily bread, that we find contentment in your gifts, and with thankful hearts serve our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by your word and promise, you have made us your people. You sent your Son into this world as a child of Mary. We thank you for the life of this child, Liam, entrusted to our care. We pray that you would bring him to the saving waters of holy baptism and grant him that precious inheritance awaiting him in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, by your word and promise, you have made us your people. Teach us to confess our sins aright and ask and receive from you forgiveness and peace. As we receive your Son's holy body and blood today, may we do so worthily, having examined ourselves according to your command. Give us eyes of faith to see that you are good, forgiving our iniquity and showing us tender pity in your great love for us. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come. 
in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.